This is recording 5.2, phosphorylation. So phosphorylation is the addition of a phosphate group to a compound. And as we consider the rest of chapter 5, we're going to be looking at the phosphorylations that generate ATP. And those phosphorylations are Re are accomplished during respiration and fermentation. I always feel a little funny saying this, but honestly, I think it's a bad idea to read chapter five. And I know that sounds a little funny, but I think if you read chapter five, it ends up making you feel confused and uh, Chapter 5 is a little bit funny. The material in here is unusual in that uh, it is uh, stuff where sometimes you need to see the big picture to understand some of the little details here. So as we go through this stuff here in Chapter 5, don't sweat it if you're not getting some of these smaller details just kind of hang in there and wait till the end and see if you uh, think that you have an understanding of the overall concept so uh, I think this is really something where you have to get to the end and look back and if you get uh, the overall picture, you're fine. So don't worry if you don't get all of these little things in here. When you get to the end, see if you get the overall. Okay, so phosphorylation again is the addition of a phosphate group to a con compound. And really what we're talking about here is getting ATP. Remember that ATP is adenosine triphosphate. And uh, adenosine triphosphate is an adenine with three phosphates on it. And those three phosphates are added on with covalent bonds. And remember that covalent bonds are strong. So the first uh, covalent bond here is just an ordinary covalent, covalent bond, just a regular single covalent bond. But the other two we usually write with these wavy lines. And these wavy lines here and here are what we call high energy bonds. And that means that we have additional energy in here, more energy than is strictly necessary to hold the phosphates on. So when the bond is broken, that energy is released. So um, when we break that A, TP down into an ADP, an adenosine diphosphate, we get that energy released in the cell. So we get an ADP, an adenosine diphosphate, and energy which we usually just write with an E. Okay, so there are three types of phosphorylations that we have happening in microorganisms. The first type is what we call a substrate level phosphorylation. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the type or this is what I showed you there. So in a substrate level phosphorylation, we transfer a phosphate from a substrate. 
So for example, uh, we might have uh, a glucose, oops, hang on here. We might have uh, a glucose phosphate. I always say that biologists are kind of lazy and we don't write out uh, the whole uh, phosphate there. The actual chemical abbreviation for phosphate is PO4 or PO3 but usually PO4 and we usually just write a P there. So, um, so when we have a substrate level phosphorylation I always abbreviate this SLP. That's not like a standard abbreviation, uh, but instead of writing out the whole thing, substrate level phosphorylation, I just use that SLP. I told you biologists are lazy. So um, in a substrate level phosphorylation, we have one of those high energy bonds that hold the phosphate onto the uh, substrate. And uh, we have an ADP. And uh, there has to be an enzyme here to do this. And the um, phosphate and the energy are transferred over to the ADP. So that leaves us with just the substrate, in this case just the plain old glucose, and um, an ATP. So the energy, the phosphate, were transferred over to the ADP, making it an ATP. So substrate level phosphorylation. So um, this occurs in many, many types of cells, including microorganisms and uh, animals, including us. So you may remember seeing some substrate level phosphorylations in your prerequisite class. And we'll see some examples here in a bit of substrate level phosphorylations. The second type of phosphorylation found in microbes are oxidative phosphorylations. Oxidative phosphorylations happen in the reactions of the electron transport chain. And we're going to talk about this in a bit. So in the electron transport chain, uh, the electrons are taken uh, from uh, reduced coenzymes, which we'll talk about in a bit here. And uh, those electrons are passed uh, between um, these pigments and uh, compounds and the energy is extracted from them and, um, and these are these things here uh, Q, cytochrome B, cytochrome C1, cytochrome C and uh, that energy is used to uh, take an ADP and a phosphate and uh, make an ATP. So the energy comes from the electrons. They're very excited electrons and so the energy is extracted from them. And uh, I know it's probably been a while since your prerequisite class, but you talked about this uh, when you talked about mitochondria uh, in your prerequisite. So we'll review this a bit. We're not going to talk about it in a lot of detail or anything like that, but the energy is extracted from uh, the electrons there in the electron transport chain. 
So oxidative phosphorylation is very energy rich. And so a lot of energy is extracted out of these electrons. Uh, when you talked about it, it occurred in the mitochondria. But of course, in many of the microorganisms, uh, the prokaryotes or the bacteria in particular, since they don't have mitochondria, this is going to happen in the plasma membrane or cell membrane. So oxidative for phosphorylation is very energy rich, and so we get a lot of ATP from it. So, uh, so we have in the microorganisms substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation. Then uh, some microorganisms can perform photophosphorylation. In photophosphorylation, uh, light energy is converted into chemical energy and then the chemical energy is used to bind phosphates onto the ADP and they get ATP. So that light energy has to be trapped by chlorophyll and so photophosphorylation can only be accomplished by those microorganisms that have the chlorophyll. And that uh, would include some of the bacteria, some of the algae, well, all of the algae actually, and a few of the protozoa. So if this sounds to you like a plant thing, uh, yes. Uh, plants, of course, are eukaryotic organisms that also have chlorophyll. So there are some of the microorganisms that have chlorophyll and they do this just like the plants do. So photophosphorylation can only be accomplished by those microorganisms that can trap light energy with chlorophyll. So we're not really going to talk anymore about photophosphorylation. Uh, we will talk some more about substrate level phosphorylation and we're going to talk more about oxidative phosphorylation. So three types in microorganisms and remember don't panic if you don't understand this yet that's just fine. We're going to wait until we see the big picture.